Okay, by the way, my screen tells me who's here. So we've got 58 people out of the 100, so that's good. And it tells me how attentive you are. So if you're, if you're looking at emails, that's it. It's suddenly gone up. If you're looking at emails or having a, having a, a doodle on Facebook or uh, surfing the web, um, it tells me that you're inattentive. So if you hear me shout your name, that's a bit like a, the metaphorical chalk going across the um, going across the room. So yeah, whoever asked about keeping notes, that is a good idea. Um, let's let's have a look at some of those questions. Um, <laughs> I have sixteen pounds of unsightly hat. Yeah, I can't hear you, Michael. Don't worry, everybody. You you are all muted. I'm the only one that's talking. So, uh, um, can I eat chocolate? You can eat chocolate, Ian. We'll talk about cheap meals. Um, yep, Scott. Yeah, thanks, Scott, for that. Scott pointed out that there's a thing called My Fitness Pal, um, which if you're using Training Peaks, you can sync with that. That's really good for keeping up to date. Um, Verda, yes, that is my chosen protein in the morning, natural Greek yogurt. Um, yeah, examples of protein you can have for breakfast. Mark, well, I, I quite often have an omelette for my breakfast if I'm not training. So three eggs. Um, you can put some, uh, you could put some bacon in there or some ham. Um, if you've cooked chicken previously, you could put chicken in with the omelet. Um, uh, you could have a you could have a um, uh, a little tub of of Greek yogurt afterwards. Um, yes, Tasha, the slides will be available. How about a protein shake? Yeah, you can have a protein shake. I prefer people to have normal meals, but protein shakes in the morning. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, um, Ellie. Uh, most of the most of the nutritionists that I talk with um, think that that eating smaller meals throughout the day is much better. You are constantly digesting, but in smaller amounts, so it means you're not feeling full. Um, yeah, Isabel, it's it's probably the um, internet connection. Um, if I uh, if if you can't hear me, yeah, protein drinks are a reasonable substitute, but again. I'd prefer people to be eating proper food rather than taking shakes. Um, uh, Margaret, yeah, it's it's per kilogram of body weight, yeah, but same amount. So between 1.5 and 2 grams, probably slightly less. Um, yeah, mama porridge, yeah, nuts and seeds for vegetarians, eggs mashed with the banana or avocado, chopped nuts, yeah, quite good. Uh, my fitness pal does mean counting and measuring calories, but... Uh, that is um, that is what you have to do, I'm afraid, if you want to get a real, really good idea of uh, of what you're eating and consuming. OK, right. So that's the questions done for the moment. So we'll crack on with a few more slides and come back to those. I finally remembered about recording it, by the way. I need to get somebody out there in future to give me a gentle prod in the ribs about that recording stuff. So um, that's only for people who are coming tomorrow. Um, yeah, myth three. Well, we all need to. Uh, we all know that we should be eating five a day, and five a day is your your entry fee, if you like. It's not your target. You should be minimum five per day. But vegetables are better than fruit because there's not as much sugar in them. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat fruit, uh, and it's a nice change. But 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 if you were having five pieces of fruit per day, that'd probably be a little bit too much sugar. So try and get some raw vegetables in there. There's probably a lot more vitamins and minerals in those as well. Um, so uh, for most meals, you want to be thinking about trying to get some vegetables every time you eat. So, my, you know, I said earlier about having raw vegetables um, and dipping them in things like hummus or um, um, not some Greek yogurt, but uh, sour cream or a little bit of avocado guacamole or some salsa or some cottage cheese. Yeah, or just eat them, just eat them as they are. Um, you could all you could also cook some vegetables extra the night before and then so they're already cooked um, and have those the next day with maybe a little bit of pesto on the side. So that would be one way. Um, obviously, there's a fair amount of planning, but we'll talk about that. Um, yep, there's nothing wrong with the fruit from time to time. But as I say, veggies first, then fruit. Um, this is one of the big myths. And I hear this a lot from athletes as well as non-athletes, particularly people down the gym going, yeah, I've cut out carbs because they make you fat. No, they don't. Do you know what makes you fat? Too many calories. That's right. Eating too much makes you fat. Eating carbs doesn't make you fat. In fact, they're very important. 
you need carbs because your immune system relies on them to keep you strong so stop eating carbs you're going to make yourself more susceptible to getting ill and as an athlete where you're smashing your immune system regularly that's like a double whammy so you do want carbs secondly you need carbs for speed and power if you're out riding or running with the guys and you come to a sharp hill and you're low on carbohydrates you're going to find that you haven't got the power it's the glycogen it's the super fuel we need for that acceleration now i'm going to talk later about low carb high fat diets in 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 a very basic form and you can do that so it's not a contradiction but you've got to be very careful about what you do so don't be too hasty about getting rid of the carbs but maybe you need to think about when you're consuming them so for instance um you eat fruits and veggies whenever you like, and they have carbohydrates in them, fibrous carbs, more in veggies, and obviously the sugars in the fruits. And if you're having fruits in their natural state, so not pulped and not dried, the sugar takes longer to come out, so you don't get some, as much of a hit as you would if they were dried fruits. Um, if you want to eat a carbohydrate that's not a fruit or a vegetable, so things like simple sugars and starchy carbs like rice, pasta, potatoes, bread, there's nothing wrong with that. But you will find that your body tolerates them best, i.e. uses them as they're supposed to be, if you do this straight after exercise. And that's because they're absorbed into the system. We'll talk about, um, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, there you go. Look. Um, have protein as well you find that uh, pro the protein will help get the carbohydrates it's like a transporter it gets the carbohydrates into the uh, the body of the muscle and into those receptors and the storage cells where they need to go back all right so plan out your food so you can get those starchy carbs as soon as you get back after a hard ride so if you're training in the morning maybe have nothing before you go and then have your porridge or your bagels or your cereal straight afterwards We'll talk about that a little bit more later on. The next thing, fats are good for you. Hey, your body needs fats. All right. So, again, we don't want to cut fats out. You need to learn to love healthy fats. There are three types, saturated, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated. You can actually tolerate all three of those in small amounts. So, don't, you don't need to be sort of a... You know uh, an OCD about your food um, and you can forget about that eating fat makes you fat maxim in fact w when we talk about the low carb high fat diet that that's where you want to be eating more fats but you need to be eating things that are, that are going to be healthy okay omega-3 fats are very very important um, saturated fat animal products plus butter or coconut oil for cooking Monounsaturated fat, mixed nuts, somebody mentioned olives and olive oil, and for polyunsaturated flax seeds. So one of the things that I use quite a bit now are those is that milled flax seed, and you get it with um, all sorts of milled up um, almonds and Brazil nuts. And um, it comes as a powder. I put that into my, my porridge that I have in the morning, but you can put it onto salads. It's, it's sort of, actually, if you feel it on salads, it's, it's quite crunchy. It's a coarse powder. So um, that's quite nice. You can get that in the uh, um, where you where you get your nuts and and cake cooking things from in the supermarket. At least that's where you get them at Sainsbury's. Okay, so let's see. Do we have any other? Oh yeah, myth number six. You need to be perfect all the time. That is not true. You don't need to be perfect with your nutrition all the time. In fact, a hundred percent nutritional discipline is not required for optimal progress. In fact, it's sometimes that's bad for you because you can go stir crazy eating all those salads and, and what you consider to be super clean eating foods. Yep. So for those of you who are asking about chocolate and pizza and chips and crisps, fill your boots at certain points of the week. OK, let's call it the 90 10 rule. OK, the difference between 90 and 100 percent in terms of adherence to diet is negligible. So give yourself a break 10 percent of the time. If you have three meals a day, that's 21 meals a week. 10 percent of that is 2.1. Actually, I've got the sums down here for you. If you have six meals a day for seven days of the week, that's 42 meals. So here's a good reason, Eleanor, for having more meals is that 10 percent of 42, you get four cheap meals. Whereas if you're only having three meals a day, you only get two cheap meals. Um, 
so you can break the rules. In fact, you shouldn't be trying to be good on those. You know, if you want a pizza followed by some ice cream, followed by a couple of glasses of wine, go for it. Right, it'll keep you happy in the long run. And once you've sort of, if you feel a bit guilty about that, then you've got another few days of being feeling not guilty before you can indulge again. It's the way to keep yourself sane. Okay, let's see if we've got any uh, any more questions here. Cashew nut butter on your toast and egg, yeah. Um, your own protein shake with skim milk, powder, peanut butter and milk. So there's some good suggestions coming out here for people. How much time does it take to digest protein before training? Mm. Not entirely sure about that. I guess it depends whether you have it in a liquid form or um, in a solid form. But protein definitely takes longer. Um, and I'm not sure that protein is actually that beneficial for your training. It's much better to, to be taken afterwards for recovery. What you really want for training, in is to, to either be persuading your body to use fats or carbohydrates. Struggle with veggies at breakfast yet? Yeah. Tomatoes, Haley, mushrooms, uh, those red, green and yellow peppers chopped up and, and fried all in one. So I have that. That's that's my omelette, really. Tomatoes, mushrooms and peppers all chopped up. Probably a cup full of those um, most mornings. OK, Ellie, yeah, I knew you'd like that one about um, the four meals. Uh, low density lipoproteins. Now, I often get mixed up with this, but HDLs, I think, are the ones that are good cholesterols and LDL are the not so good cholesterols. Um, and I think that's probably right. Um, but if you stick to those fats we talked about, Mark, you know, omega threes. Uh, is that right, John? <laughs> um, LDLs and HDLs have got them the right way around. Yeah, good point again there um, from my friend Scott. He's like my uh, he's like my guardian angel. Um, for those of you who are asking about protein supplements, um, strict liability applies. So just because you are not a professional triathlete or a professional athlete doesn't mean that you don't have to apply the same rigor to selection of your supplements if you're racing, particularly those of you who are going to race for Great Britain or age group medals. Um, you get tested, and if they find something in your system from a tainted source, you'll be met with the same sort of repercussions as the professional athletes that are tested positive. So um, you have to be very careful. Make sure it comes from a um, make sure it comes from 100 percent genuine source and that it's been tested and tested clean. Um, so, Liam, if I normally swim first thing in the morning, would you eat something small beforehand or in a certain time of getting out of the pool? Well, personally, I've been experimenting with this and we'll come back to it in um, in the in the sort of fasted or low carb stuff i've managed to get through um a two-hour swim session on a saturday morning now with no calories uh, and it's a hard with, with swimming five and a half to six k um so uh, if you want to turn your body onto burning fats then that's what you need to be doing if you want to persuade it to burn carbohydrates then you would have a small carbohydrate meal like a bagel uh, probably an hour before you swim smoked salmon yeah perfect um, a Nutribullet, spinach and fruit, yeah, no protein, but gets the five a day sorted. Yeah, so you need to get some protein in there as well. Um, yeah, Fraser, uh, I haven't really got any nutritional supplements that I recommend. Um, omega, cod liver oil, omega-3, any general recommendations? Uh, beetroot, beetroot does help, I understand. Two shots, you need two shots. Uh, beef jerky and snack. Yeah, high protein, high in salt. Used it on the MDS, actually. It's one of those Marmite type things. People either love it or hate it. Um, how long does it take for the body to convert to using fats? Well, you can, you know, if you fasted and then you eat fats, it'll start working on fat straight away because when, when your body starts to process the fat, it switches on that mechanism. If you eat carbohydrates and start digesting them, then the body switches on to carbs. Um, right, that seems to be the end of the questions there. So let's go back to um, let's go back to our slides. It's nine nineteen thirty two. So uh, some other things that we need to think about um, that you can do to uh, eat well. Uh, if you really are trying to lose weight, one of the simplest ways to do that is to ditch any drinks that contain calories. So you do a quick audit of what you consume during a day. Um, we're talking, uh, um, we're talking no calories. So we need, 
to remove fruit juices right fruit juices there's lots of sugar in those lots of calories you might think it's part of your five a day but you'd be better off making your own uh, juice from a little bit less fruit and a little bit more veg or even taking a greens thing um, any alcoholic drinks will have um, will have sugar in them and calories um, and sodas and so uh, um, they're the sorts of things we want we can move away from your diet very easily without it being detrimental to your your daily calorie intake so that that's an easy win okay yeah an easy way to get rid of 250 calories a day we had a lady at the gym once who used to drink four cans of cola during the day at work from the vending machine and when we got when we got to put it in the food diary she never wrote it down um, and it only it was only five or six months later when my other trainer sort of talked to her about stuff and, and spent a bit of time with her that he saw she was drinking all this coke and asked her about it. And she said, do you know what? It's so habitual. I never even considered writing it down. So um, it's easy to overlook. Um, so if you're trying to lose weight, this might sound like a hard choice, but if you're trying to lose weight, then what we need Um, this should come up on your screen, but it, it hasn't. Is um, looks like we're having some problems here with this. Um, I'm going to go back out of there. Can you guys tell me if you can still hear me? Uh, just put your hand up if you can still hear me, please. Hands up. Ah, yeah, right. Okay, looks like we're back on now with that slide. So, um, yeah, you can hear me, right? Good. Okay, so there's the thing. Best choice is water, green or herbal teas, and of course, black coffee. Okay, right. Other things, whole foods. So uh, avoiding processed foods is also good. So if it comes out of a packet, if it comes out of a tin, if it's been made in the factory, um, it will probably have things added to it, things you don't want, extra salt, extra sugar. You may even see a lot of this really irritates me now when I find all the Greek yogurt's got all the fat taken out of it because it's good fat, you know. And actually, um, if you were... Uh, if you taste the, although the, if you get the total stuff, it's uh, it's got a lot more, lot of protein in it, but um, it's uh, it, it just tastes a little different with the fat missing. So um, whole foods. Kevin, my friend, the nutritionist says, eat foods that are close to the tree. Now that doesn't mean standing under the apple tree and waiting for the apple to land by you or picking it off there. What I mean is you need to have something that you're going to eat that's as close to its original state as possible so if you are eating an apple or a pineapple or something then that will be how it's been you know taken off the tree if you're eating meat then you have your steak it's pretty much how the butcher has prepared it but if you're eating a sausage that's not how it came at the pig it came out of a factory somebody's made that from other things so that isn't uh, as close to the tree likewise if you have apple juice then it's been processed um, and if you have uh, yeah apple puree it's been processed even more so you can see how many steps there are so so try to avoid that if you really want to look at um, improving your nutrition okay so it's that old thing if you kill it catch it or pick it and you do your own cooking then you won't go far wrong so Jamie Oliver yeah a lot of people don't like him think he's an idiot do you know what though he talks about well in fact most of these chefs do they talk about getting fresh food and preparing it and making meals. Yeah, of course, some of them make it nice and fancy so it looks great on the plate and they can charge you a lot of money for it. But some of Jamie's stuff is it's just nice, simple food that you can that you can uh, prepare really quickly and eat. And it's food for real people. So, yeah, you, you can't go far wrong if you buy one of Jamie Oliver's cookbooks and start pre preparing some of the meals out of there. OK, now here's where we talk about planning. Because this is where the clever stuff starts. Um, sticking to the things we've talked about is difficult unless you have a plan. So all of you are on my SWAT program at the moment. 
all of the athletes that I coach, you have a training plan each week. You can look at it in advance and see what you train, what training you're supposed to be doing on a particular day. And you're able to plan your week. If you know you're going swimming and it's a pull session, then you know you've got to take your pull boy. If it's a kick session, you know you need your fins. If you're going out on the bike and it's a mountain bike session, then you know you need to have your mountain bike ready and prepared. Okay. If you go into the track, you need to get your spikes so you get the right kit. Well, it's the same with food. You have to have a plan. So um, you need to have the right food available. So you need to plan your shopping. And then when you want to cook it, you need to prepare ahead of time. It's called batch cooking. Um, the housewives and, and the girls who've done, and other people who've done home economics, that's not restricted just to ladies. Um, if you plan your family food, you will know that um, you have to do that in advance to get the shopping, to get it right on the day. Um, we'll talk about that again in just a moment with strategies, but you need to balance food choices with healthy variety. So um, don't just eat the same meals all the time. Yes, it's good for uniformity and, you know, if you're familiar with it and ease of cooking, but you need some variety in there to get different minerals. We always recommend you know, when you're eating fruits and veggies just to go for things with different colours. Um, you will have a set of simple meals that you eat regularly. So I have two breakfasts, really. It's either my porridge with some fruit and some Greek yogurt and some nuts, or it's my omelette with my peppers and, and tomatoes and, and some spinach and everything in there. Um, but then um, but then you want to branch out a bit from there, the things that will sort of entertain you. Um, I have the same lunches most weeks. You know, I make soup in the winter. I have salads. Um, if I've had my porridge in the morning and I'm at home, then I'll probably have the omelette for lunch. Um, and then it's the evening meals where you want to start experimenting a little bit. Um, but again, you, you can mix and match with things. I think tonight we're having uh, mashed sweet potatoes, carrots, cauliflower and peas with some uh, chicken breasts with a seasoning. That nice and simple. OK, right, we're going to go to superfoods in a minute. But before that, we're going to go to the questions. So, um, um, yeah, OK, Ellie, good point about um, where you heard that one. <laughs> Great question. Um, advice I've received about supplements. Uh, yeah, iron. Um, for females. Um, yes, eat foods that look like they do naturally. That's good. What you once said, kill it, pick it or grow it. Yeah, I've just said that again. I think Jamie Oliver latest series is quite good. Okay, you've just said it right. Jamie Superfood, sweet potato chips. Yeah, I love sweet potato chips. And that's recommended by the EIS nutritionist as well. So I think we'll go sweet potato chips. All right. You can roast them or you can, uh, yeah, you can roast them. Roast them and cover them in olive oil and some salt and roast them a bit. They're great. Uh, sweet potato mash I like. And I like um, sweet potatoes. Um, um, large roasted ones as well, like with my Sunday dinner. Okay, right, we're uh, we're going to go on to the superfoods now. So um, let's let's go on to this then. So here are some of the things that some suggestions for things that you might want to try eating a bit more of. So we talked about protein. So we're looking at lean red meat. Um, we saw some research that shows that if you buy basic cuts of red meat versus more expensive ones, um, the, the, the inflammation that your stomach is under um, lasts for twice as long. That's the inflammation and stress to digest the, that food. OK, um, so eating good cuts of meat and fish is like an investment in your health. Believe me, it is. Um, salmon, somebody mentioned salmon earlier. Eggs, you, you can, if you look hard enough, find eggs that have omega-3 oils in them, probably because of what they feed. Um, they feed the chickens, and those are free-range chickens, not not um, not the ones the battery chickens. Um, Low-fat plain yogurt, Greek yogurt, somebody's already mentioned, and protein supplements. But remember that sort of um, thing about you have the responsibility to make sure your protein supplements are uh, are hundred percent clean. Um, veggies and fruits, the good things. Spinach is great, particularly for alkaline stomachs, so balancing out all the acidity we get from a lot of stuff. Tomatoes, particularly cooked, are great. Um, they actually help you cope with the, the sun a bit more. Broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, also good for cruciferous vegetables. Mixed berries and oranges. 
Okay, you can probably add carrots to that, peppers. You know, this the the the, the uh, list is endless, really, with the veggies and fruits. And I wouldn't find I wouldn't think you'd find any vegetables that are on a list of things you shouldn't eat. Okay, in terms of good fats, mixed nuts, avocados, extra virgin olive oil, fish oil, and flax seeds. So for those of you who are asking about um, supplements, the fish oil would be good. And flax seeds, um, drinks, and other things. Green tea, exercise drinks, quickly digested carbs and protein. Um, did an interview, I think so. I told some of you on the Facebook page, I did an interview last week with Nigel Mitchell for my new podcast series. Nigel's been at Team Sky for five years. He was with British Cycling for 14 years. He's just moved on to do his own consultancy. But he was talking about um, greens, are, as a, again, I, I talked about acidity in the stomach. Greens and the green um, supplements are a really good way of, of helping to balance out the acids in your stomach with some alkaline stuff. You can use them. They're really good to take on training camps um, if you get the powdered version. And, and you don't need to worry about a loss of integrity of the vegetable content because they're often freeze dried from from fresh. So you don't lose any of that. Um, obviously, fresh stuff is better because of the fiber. But if you're going on a training camp or you're somewhere where you need greens quickly, then green supplements and, and actually um, Whereas in the, in the US, you've been able to get bottles of the um, greens for ages. They're now starting to, um, to to come into the English supermarkets as well. OK. Um, more on superfoods then. Uh, dividing it up into the three main macronutrients. Carbs. So your pasta, your rice, bread, couscous, potatoes, quinoa is the only non um, is the only vegetarian option with the full range. So non meat option with the full range of amino acids. So quinoa is like a super, super food. Um, remember, all of this, unless you want the starchy carbs, is the whole food brown stuff. Let's let's try and keep away from the white processed stuff. So muesli, um, steel cut, uh, oats there for your porridge. In terms of the protein, the meats, turkey, chicken, beef, fish and the oily fish is better. Milk, nuts, tofu, beans, lentils, eggs. So quite a few things, nearly all of those on the uh, bottom there for you for the vegetarians um maybe not the eggs if you if if you're really um really serious about what you eat on the vegetarianism thing but i'm not getting into that debate um and also then on the fats then we go back fats nuts olive oil flax seeds avocado olives hummus and fish and they've got double stars there because they've got protein content as well so flax hummus and fish so there are some suggestions of things that should be in your in your cupboards all of the time. OK, and in your shopping list and should be making up a large portion of your weekly meals. OK, yep, yeah, two stars equals protein as well. All right, let's uh, see a quarter of an hour to go. Let's see if we can get some questions and rush through these. So. Um, Uh, turkey thigh meat, yeah, turkey meat. I think turkey meat is pretty good. And um, we eat turkey steaks and turkey thighs. So uh, I think if you, particularly if you know what the what the sauce is and you and you're comfortable with that, yeah, good fats. Thank you, Margaret. Um, steel cut oats. Where can most supermarkets you'll get? If you look around, you'll get the porridge. Just you just want the you just want the standard supermarket stuff. But but just have a look around in the uh, in the porridge section, Verna. Um, you'll find that in most of them there. Um, obviously, they give bigger displays to, you know, the chocolate coated um, cereals that they want all the kids to eat. And then right at the bottom at the back, you'll find the healthy stuff and the porridge. Even it'll even be below the mueslis. And, and on that um, granola stuff, I, I, I was looking at the granola light. We had more sugar than the normal granola, but I like granola and Greek yogurt mixed or, or milk as a quick snack after I've trained. Um, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> ostrich ryan yeah ostrich is supposed to be um or kangaroo meat is supposed to be the the highest protein and lowest fat content um yep yeah, amino acids perhaps in turkey um have i ever heard of key ah, superfood cereal no i have not heard of that alan um there is that is that freaka stuff that i heard about recently as well that's supposed to be a new superfood i've not tried it but if anyone's um Heard a free car? Let me know. Uh, yeah, Michael. Yeah, how do I get my protein with porridge? So there'll be a little bit in the milk, but I add my Greek yogurt to it. I mix it all in. Um, chia, hemp, and buckwheat, I think, Alan. Right, okay. 
Okay, Mark, no problem. You'll be able to get the end of the recording if you've got to leave. Okay, let's go back to the slides. So we've gone through those superfoods. And we're on to your biggest challenge. So I've given you all the tools, but I know that you all have challenges each week. And I know that the challenge is in the same way that you have challenges in getting to the pool early, in getting to your Sunday bike ride. You know, you've got kids' errands to do. You're working late. You're starting early. You you just haven't got time to prepare the food. You are not alone. Those are the challenges. But planning is the only way to get around this. These are the challenges. No time to prepare food. People who are on the move all the time, who are traveling, driving around for your job um, because you don't know what foods to eat. Oh, I think I've given you enough suggestions there. Or you can't cook and you don't know how to prepare it. So here are some answers or, or some solutions for how to get around some of these challenges. Um, firstly, how to eat clean without it taking over your life. Um, it's about planning and preparation. So number one, you need to plan your meals. This is what we do. You make a timetable up of all the meals you're going to have for the next seven days, right? You divide it into little squares, like a, like a school timetable. Lunch, uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then your little snacks in between. So let's let's think about five meals a day. So for breakfast, for me, it will be, let's say I'm having porridge. So it's my porridge. I want my flaxseed in there. I want my chopped almonds in there. I want my little bit of honey to go in it for a bit of sweetness. I want my Greek yogurt and I want some berries to go on it, right? So I make I make that. My other breakfasts are, are, are omelettes. So I want my eggs. I want my cheese. I want my peppers, my tomatoes. Um, I want uh, maybe some um, chorizo sausage just to go in there. And uh, my mushrooms. So I've got that list for my breakfasts. And then I go through the cupboard and most of the fresh vegetables I'll need to buy, the Greek yogurt I'll need to buy. Maybe I've got a week's supply of porridge. So I tick off all the things I need to buy that aren't in the cupboard. And, and I go through the whole week like that and that forms my shopping list. And then I go to the shop. Well, one of us goes to the shop on a Sunday and we'll buy the stuff that's on the list. Nothing else. So none of those special offers, none of the bog offs, none of the, none, none of the things that we don't need. Just get what's on the list. Come home. And then we do our preparation the night before. So before we finish for the night, we'll be making breakfast for tomorrow and lunches for tomorrow. And then we'll have the food in for the evening meal and we'll do that in the evening. And if we're cooking vegetables, we'll probably do too many. And so they can go in the box for tomorrow's lunch. OK, so you can see we've planned ahead. Sometimes if you are traveling a lot and you're going to get back in late, you may want to prepare your meals on a Sunday and then freeze them. So you can easily do that with with a stew or with a chili or with a bolognese. Or with, a, or with a curry or a casserole or something and then put it into meal sized containers, shove them in the freezer and then get them out in the morning before you go to work. And so they're defrosted by the time you come home. Um, if you've got some quinoa, you can store that in the fridge so you don't need to keep cooking new each night and, and you're off you go. It's as simple as that. OK, um, so we've created the shopping list. Um, we buy the right foodstuffs and don't deviate from the list. Prepare your food in advance or set aside time aside to cook. And if you set aside an hour on a, on a weekend or, a, or an hour and a half on a Sunday afternoon, it will make life during the week so much easier. All right. Food prep strategies. So Sunday cooking time, you, you should need three hours. You, you can prepare your evening meals. You get you chop up all your peppers and all your meals, vegetables, maybe soup for the week. Um, breakfast and lunches, you do these the night before. I've done this. I've timed it. I've filmed it. Um, I can even show you the film. It takes me two minutes to make um, breakfast for two people and it takes me 10 minutes to make lunch for two people. So that's a salad. Um, or you could have others cook for you. So if you can't be asked with all of that cooking and you've got the money, um, there are people now, there are companies who um, cook meals for the busy people. You obviously pay for them, but it saves you time. So if you can afford that. Uh, you could try that or you could go and eat out every night or you could eat in the canteen at work or you could eat at a local cafe if you know that the food is good and it fits in with your nutrition plan. Uh, buying ready prepared meals. There you go. There are some of your options. Um, these are some of the things you might need if you're going to do the food, food prep. So I'm just going to rush through this list. Um, you, you get one of those countertop grills like the George Foreman, not the George Formby grill, as somebody once said, the George Foreman grill. Um, you can do that for cooking large quantities of chicken breasts, turkey steaks, all that sort of stuff. Um, you might want a juicer or a blender for your shakes. 
you need a cooler bog a uh, cooler bog cooler bag or box cooler bog um to carry your food for the day we have one of those which we use at weekends keeps it cool with one of those ice packs um you need some tupperware containers probably five small ones for storing and carrying your daily meals five large ones for storing chopped up veg in the fridge or cooked meat or to freeze your evening meals uh, you probably also want some drinks containers for those uh, smoothies that you were talking about all right um strategies for eating on the move then being in control of what you eat so um the worst thing that can happen is you end up having to go to greg's you get there a bit late all they've got left as for those of you who don't live in the uk greg's is just a, a sort of like a it's not a deli chain it's a baker's and they make sandwiches so you get a white thin you know really use this piece of white bread with some thin cheese and some mayonnaise and some butter and and yeah you're not going to die if you eat that but it certainly isn't that nutritious um so if you're traveling for the day you're just going out and you're a sales rep or you've got a lot of um you've got a lot of traveling to do to go to an event um, make your food in advance have a cooler bag take it with you simple if it's not possible then plan ahead and think about where you might stop so marks and spencer's places at these at the uh, motorway now you pick up some good salads and protein ice salads and they they do some pretty good stuff but it's not cheap um, it certainly be a lot easier if you did it yourself um overnight traveling again self catering if you if you if particularly if you're racing find somewhere that's self catering so you control what food you take um if you don't want to do that then most decent hotels if you ring ahead and check with the kitchen the catering staff will be able to tell you what's on the menu and what you can order and what will be good for you pre and post race and post training uh, very important sometimes if you're going abroad particularly for vegetarians some of the places in central europe uh, are not that uh, familiar with providing food for vegetarians so you'll, you'll just get chicken on the steak with your, on the plate with your vegetables and you'll have to scrape it off um so think ahead um I, I have some clients that travel a lot um, around the world and, and they have personal assistants and I get I get them to look at the um, the hotels where they're staying and check out the menus or check out other restaurants where they can eat locally, where they'll be able to get food that suits their nutrition preferences. Um, but stay near the good food. Um, if you're going self-catering, then you want to make sure and, and you haven't got a car, you want to make sure you're quite near to the decent shops as well, because the last thing you want to be doing is is trying to ride your bike for three miles with a, with a carrier bag hanging off each handlebar or walking three miles with a great big bag of, of vegetables in the market. Um, so a bit of, again, a bit of preparation in advance. Um, if you're doing foreign traveling, uh, the, the, the advice is as per the above. But if you're racing and not sure about the local cuisine, then you should think seriously about, about certainly taking things like um, dried pasta, uh, maybe freeze dried meals, just because I've, I've heard of people who've gone particularly in countries they're not familiar with and had stomach problems and that's affected the whole race. So again, think ahead. Um, right. Uh, let's just quickly. Um, yeah, we haven't got many slides left, so we're just going to quickly get on with some more questions. Uh, cheer seeds. Yeah, Margaret. Yeah, good. Um, try that. Got to go swimming. Uh, brands of products of the green supplements. Uh, yeah, could maybe I could maybe send you out some of the greens. I know OTE are just doing their own. CNP do some as well. Um, yeah. Um, why would you use one products? Yeah, well, that would be my question, but maybe other people could tell me. I prefer quinoa. Well, corn actually. Corn would be your meat. Yeah, Michael, am I allowed to say can't be asked on my own webinar? I think I just did. <laughs> um reuse chinese takeaway containers yet uh, oh that's all right you allow the chinese takeaway um 10 of the time okay okay uh so we talked about um strategies and let's just talk about nutrition and training for a bit i find a lot of people um have carbs far too often i know that that's what the nutrition companies want but but Perhaps, perhaps we don't need to perhaps we need to think about it rather than just doing it automatically personally, personally i think if you're if you're within if you, within, if you, have, if you have a session that's less than 60 minutes long, long there's absolutely, there's absolutely no, no need to consume any calories at all your body has body about, about 2,000 calories of glycogen, glycogen stored in it, stored in it which should be more than, than enough for two hours of hard activity so you don't, so you need, don't to need to top up with calories, calories in a 60 minute session 
when you do, when need, you do need to think about calories, calories during, during session, session are on longer, longer workouts, workouts of great, great diminished so it's so it's rare for rare for most of you doing, doing a swim session, swim session that, that really go really way over way over six to long it's long easy we do our two hours in Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Um, 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 but you might but you might see a long ride ride can we send you occasional occasional long run um, um, where you might you might to think about about supplementing your energy see how far I can get, get without any carbs in lunch in lunch money that three and a half hour half hour reasonably steady ride ride without carbs I've had a two hour two hours Saturday morning so far I have got an air in there it all goes wrong but I've I've managed to get through okay it also requires you to be a bit more careful about pacing and training training which if you're doing I am man, I am a bad thing, bad thing. Um, so, so four hour rides, hour rides um, um, you need to think about consuming, consuming on the ride. Also, also if you've got high volume, volume training on a training camp, camp, you may you need to be thinking about consuming about calories on these rides just to get the calories in, calories in um, to make sure you get enough calories in, calories in um, either for the whole day or because you need to prepare for a session later on. Okay. You also need to think about what you've got to consume post ride or post training session. Yeah, again, particularly if you're doing two sessions in a day and this is session one. Um, so be mindful, just be mindful. Otherwise, you end up going straight to the supermarket and buying some junk food because you haven't planned ahead. OK, let's let's just talk about this um, low carb, high fat thing. I don't want to get into massive detail about it because I'm not an expert, but I'm experimenting. And these are the things that I've learned over the last few weeks. Um, Low carb, high fat could be good for people if you've got a low volume training plan. So for most age groupers who are limited, um, forcing the body to oxidize fat instead of going to the default burning carbs probably will make you more efficient. And for a long duration endurance event like ours, where most of us are operating at around 80 to 85 percent, you're going to be burning an awful lot of fat. OK, most people couldn't go at, at threshold level or above for two hours. You know, just we just most age groupers just don't have the conditioning. So you are going to be going at that sub threshold level. If you can persuade your body to burn more fat, there's, you've got it in abundance. Um, if you go too far over that threshold level, you're going to be burning carbohydrates. Then you're going to have to start thinking about replacement. And then you've got the, you know, the logistical problems there. Um, so it's good if you have a low volume training plan. Um, it forces the body to oxidize fats, which is good which is perhaps why we need to just move away from the nutrition company's advice just a little. Um, it's not good for people who are in high volume training. So if you're over 15 hours, you're probably going to find you in carbohydrate deficit a lot of the time. Um, also, if you're doing events where it requires repeated explosive efforts. So if you are doing um, IT, the ITU style triathlons where there's 40 or 50 spikes of several hundred watts, um, if you're riding in the Yorkshire Dales and there's a lot of short, sharp climbs, um, then you will find that you you lose that acceleration and oomph by not having the carbs. Um, also, people are going on training camps and suddenly bump up the training volume. You might find you need to be more thoughtful about your carbohydrate intake during and after. OK, um, yeah, if you're doing high volume stuff, can it lead to permanent carb deficit and then the problems with the immune system and recovery and everything else? All right. Um, if you want to try it here, um, if you get up in the morning, you've probably heard of fasted training as well. Fa and, and bear in mind that this low carb, high fat is not about losing weight. It's about training your body to oxidize fats more. OK, so please don't think that if you go without carbs or go without calories before training, you're actually going to you're actually going to um, accelerate your fat loss. You may well do that. But what you're going to also do is come unstuck. And you're just going to hit a brick wall at some point. OK, so it's about teaching the body to oxidize fats more effectively. So ways you can do it, training the mornings and that should say without eating breakfast, not with eating breakfast, without. I will just I'll go in there and change that because I don't want you to get the wrong idea. There we go. Easily done. So without eating breakfast. Um, You've probably fasted anyway if you've eaten your dinner at eight o'clock night before. You have a, so you could you could also have a high fat breakfast before training, which switches the body's fat burning mechanism on. Um, you consume zero calories during training, okay, switches the body's fat burning mechanism on. Um, 
you need to regulate your effort so you need to be very careful about those spikes in power or effort because when those happen you'll be burning glycogen you need to consume higher carb meals before high intensity workouts so you will have some of these so you probably need to come off the low carb high fat have a higher carb meal beforehand so either the night before and a little bit of carbohydrate the morning before a, a high intensity interval workout or again if you've got a long ride that's going to be hitting some hills for those of you who live near me in Leeds and going out into Yorkshire or the Peaks or Scotland or the Lakes or Cornwall for Mark Hudson you know um, those short sharp hills need some carbohydrates um, you also need to replace carbs through high GI meals after training okay so make sure you're replacing the carbs that you've burnt um, and there it requires much more planning and preparation of what you're doing finally um, last couple of things then nut nutrition for recovery um, timing of food intake protein and carbohydrates the best chocolate milk is number one nice and simple easy get your pint of milk put some chocolate powder from Cadbury's in there and um, shake it all up put it in one of those little containers and have it after um, you've trained Malcolm Brown who's the running coach for Alistair and Johnny and all the guys in Leeds used to take one of those little um, like milkman's containers of, of bottles of milk for all of the uh, all of the athletes when they'd finished their Tuesday night track session because he, he just could make sure that they got their their protein and carbs in straight away um, Malcolm the milkman um, protein also improves glycogen repletion so that's why you need to have glycogen and uh, sorry protein and carbohydrate together um, you need to have it within 30 minutes of training so you want a small meal um, a bottle of milk you can sip while you're driving home if you're on your way home um, a small pot of cereal with um, some milk in or some mixed in my favorite as I said is granola with Greek yogurt mixed in um, high GI is better so this is when you do eat those white starchy carbohydrates and cereal gets significantly more glycogen into the muscle I'm not sure of the science behind that but the science has proved that so I don't normally advocate eating cereals because most of them are just over commercialized and full of sugar but if you want quick replenishment of the muscles after training cereals are good then okay now um, I know some of you are going to be asking about racing weight let's see if there's any questions I'm gonna then I'm gonna spend five minutes on racing weight and then we are done yeah my protein I've greens powder yet yeah. sound has gone um, microphone sound 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 um, sound hopefully hopefully you're all back you are breaking up uh, okay now okay sound back yeah sorry I don't know what happened there everything was the same all right uh, yeah don't need to remind you of those hills right all good all good right okay okay thanks Ellie um, okay right so no questions there so let's just crack on with this final thing about racing weight so racing weight I have people come to me saying I need to be 75 kilos if 75 kilos is where you perform best at on race day and you know that 75 kilos is where you race best then that's your racing weight don't come to me with some randomly generated number because you mate 70 kilos and you want to beat him that you were 70 kilos when you were 18 and that's what when you look best that by being 70 kilos you'll be four percent body fat and that will qualify you for the super low body fat category those are just randomly generated numbers and generally when people are that lean or that low in weight they don't perform at their best anyway sometimes it's better to be a little bit heavier so over the over time you have to experiment with what's the best weight for racing not that not and that's not often the same as the best weight for looking good um, a few years ago some of the Ironman athletes were really lean and they weren't performing well um, and, and I know that on the ITU circuit a few years ago some of them were getting really ripped and cut up and, and that's you know it might be good for a physique competition but it ain't good for endurance racing so it's not the lightest you can possibly be or your year round weight okay so how do you get to race weight well the first thing is try to stay close to it year round within one to two kilos i'd recommend but less than a five percent variation so if you're 75 kilos five percent is 3.75 kilos so you'd want to go no higher than 79 kilos in the off season okay if you're 60 kilos then that means you've got a three kilo variation either way 
Um, remember that health is paramount in all these. So you could be super light and really lean, but if you're ill, you're not going to be doing any racing anyway. So health, health first. Okay, I think we did that. Right, here's some. Here's a little table that I did. I'll put it all up. Oops, no, not that one. Okay, so um, for those of you who do want to lose weight, um, the first thing you've probably been doing after your racing season, if you can see the graph, is that you were... Uh, I use my cursor here so you can see as I'm moving around the screen here. So here, you're in get out of shape. See the cursor there? You've probably finished your end of season. You've gone up to 74 kilos from your 70, 72 and a half. Then the optimal time to lose weight is right now. In the off season, you've got three or four months. If you've got three kilos to lose, that's just less than a kilo a month. It's easy to do. I'm going to show you the maths in a minute. Um, what you want to do is, is not try to lose lots of weight in the period before you're racing. Um, at that point, you will be compromising your calorie intake at a time when you need those calories to recover. So... I'm going to show you the next sort of calculations. This is how we work out how, how we lose weight. It's just simple maths. The 700, the 7,700 calories in a kilo of fat. If you have two kilos to use to lose over December and January, that's 15,400 calories. If we divide that by the 62 days in the month, that's just under 250 calories a day. So in June, December to January, sorry, our athlete needs to reduce cal calorie intake by just 250 calories a day. Now, if we did that little food diary at the beginning and we cut out some of those sweets and chocolates and, um, you know, the cappuccinos that we have every day and the, and the skinny muffins that have got 5,000 calories in, you can probably find 250 calories really easy, but only if you've done your food diary. Once you've gone past February and you've just got half a kilo to lose a month coming into the race, that's only 3,800 calories. Divide that by the 28 days in February, that's only 140 calories a day. So that's nothing. You can just have a little less on your plate. Okay, so there's the maths. It's simple to do. And um, you just need to have a plan again and, and spread it over time. But if you've got a lot of weight to lose, try to do it now before it really matters too much. Okay, and then just on this thing about lean versus skinny. So we see this guy here. He's what it's called skinny. All right, he's got no muscle tone. You see, we call it, we used to call them skinny fat in the gym because you see these women and some of the guys now, they look great with clothes on. When they take them off and they've got the shorts and the t-shirt on, they've got no muscle tone. They, they, they don't actually look that good. They're just thin. All right. Um, you need to start lifting weights and eating more if you like that. If you like these guys where you've got good muscle tone, um, you've got good physiques, then... Um, you've got less body fat and you've got good muscle, then if you're like that, then good work. Well done. Um, okay, so that's it. Uh, I'm going to take some questions to finish. Uh, just for those of you who are on and liked what you heard tonight, and I hope you did take some notes, and I will make these slides and the 90% of it, which I recorded, available. If you're not in my SWAT program, you get all of this stuff in there, plus the training programs, and you get the... Uh, um, the winter base plan, you get the tri strength throughout the year, twice a week, you get a summer race plan, you get the fantastic community we've got on. I don't know if there's anybody on the SWAT plan now that are just going to write a comment and tell everybody how good it is, although I'll, I will have to read it out. But um, it's, it's going far better than I thought it would. So if you wanted to join the SWAT plan, the price is going up soon. Um, for those of you who are current members, don't panic. Your price stays the same. It's only for new people. It's currently £120 a month or twelve fifty a month. Uh, sorry, £120 a year or 12 50 per month. If you'd like to join and you get all those bonuses and loads of other stuff, all of my playbooks, all of my little documents and manuals that help with racing and training, um, you get free access to all of those, plus live Q&As with me every two weeks, plus webinars like this exclusively. Um, you just need to go to this link. I'm going to leave it up there for a couple of minutes. And I'm going to leave that there while I answer your questions. So let's see what's on the question thing here. Ah, muesli and yogurt after training. Marion Voss's favourite. Well, if it works for world champions. Um, 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yep, quality. Never been so organised in training. The Facebook. That's Liam. So Liam's on the SWAT page. Never been so organised in training, and the Facebook page really helpful. Dave Moulding. I'm on the SWAT team. It's super great feedback. Training plans. Great interaction. Thank you, Fraser. Um, he says he doesn't go anywhere for try resources except SWAT now. Thank you very much, Dave. You've been a great ambassador. Okay, if uh, if you've got any questions, type them in the question box now. Uh, there's nothing there right now. It's 2013, so I'm going to sit around for two minutes and answer them. Um, otherwise, I'm gone because my dinner's waiting. So type away. Um, okay, Rich, thanks for coming. Cheers, Phil. Thank you for coming. Appreciate that. Thank you, Richard. Um, so yeah, I've got you've got 75 seconds for those questions. Type away. Come on, don't leave me hanging. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, yeah. Have a Guinness. Go and eat. Go and eat. Great stuff. I'm on the SWAT club. Yeah, sent it to a mate who said he's joined up. Don't have any questions. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, John Mails. Yeah, nice talking to you. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> Headspace needs to be engaged too, so all that all that's put into practice. Just doing a turbo and ate my dinner. Thank you very much. Thank you. Plenty to digest. Ha, ha, ha. Very good. What's the capital of Peru? Phil is Lima. Ha, bet you didn't think I'd get that one. Um, Alan Patrick, thank you from Canada. Nice. Thank you to our Commonwealth cousins. When's the next webinar? A couple of weeks, probably, Andy. Um, I'll let you know. Your thoughts on fish and chips, chip shop style. Steve, I had mine last night. They were great. Best, best, um, best takeaway meal you can get. Fish and chips. Paul Ford. Yeah. Teresa can't wait to start on her diet. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Need to ask the missus. I need to ask the missus why I'm not in the SWAT club. You do. Do you think it's more important to get right balance of carbs, protein, and fats, or micronutrients? Start with the basics, Lee. If you it, actually, if you get in the macronutrients right, particularly the um, you know, the veg, then you'll be getting all the micro. Oh, you'll be getting most of the micronutrients. So, get get the uh. Get the macronutrients, fats, protein, and carbs, good carbs. And uh, make sure you're getting all the veg and you'll be fine, Lee. Um, good to hear your voice. Yes, and you, Maureen. Thank you all the way from Hawaii, Maureen. Brilliant. Ter yeah, Teresa says hello, hello, hello. Thanks again, Ryan. Can we all come over for dinner tonight? Yeah, of course. That's uh, Beth from LA and from Santa Ana. Chili is good. Chili's good, Paul. And on that note, no more questions, so I'm out of here. Thanks all for coming, and I'll see you on the next webinar. Bye for now.